Welcome. Question we're going to answer today is, can you afford to move to Howard County, Maryland? My guess is if you're watching this, you already know something about the county. I'm hoping to tell you a few things maybe that you um, didn't know. And um, in addition to learning a little bit about the county, we're going to look at some of the current data. So we are in October of 2024 right now. We'll look at some of the, the recent data. And we will also take a property tour of a home built in 1961, a very common age for some of the homes in this area that are a little more affordable because of their age, but you can see um, what to expect for those. So I'm going to take you to the Howard County, Maryland, about Howard County page, um, this website, and for any county that you're going to um, in Maryland or in any state, always a good idea. Kind of check out some of the, the um, local county and state websites um, to get some information on those. Howard County, it's a great place to live. Um, heart of the DMV, it is right between DC and Baltimore, closer to the Baltimore side, um, very commutable area. So it has lots of amenities, restaurant shopping. Um, you've got Meriwether Post Pavilion, lots of cultural opportunities and events going on there, but also a lot of rural um, areas, park areas. So you can see at this point in time, about 120,000 households. But what's great about it is six regional parks, 24 community parks, seven golf courses, five lakes, over 200 miles of walking and hiking trails and biking trails. So a lot to do, um, whether you are looking for the outdoors, whether you're looking for historic areas to go and to go antiquing. This um, particular home we're going to look at is um, one of the, it's considered Ellicott City. It's not in historic downtown Ellicott City, but lots of great historic um, downtowns and locations within Howard County as well. So let's talk about the data. So current listings, we have um, from the 200s all the way to the, the mid 600s, you can get townhomes and apartments. Some of those townhomes are quite new. So very affordable um, if you are looking for those types of residences. If you are looking for detached homes, you can get those from the low 400s all the way up to about $5 million. So a lot of different price points in there, a lot of different opportunities for buyers within that range. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what some of those different homes look like. Typically, if you're looking on the lower end, the 400s, you're looking at a home that's probably a little bit older, probably a little bit smaller, um, and probably needs some updates, probably not renovated. So uh, the property tour we're going to go on here in a few minutes is of a home um, that has not been renovated. It does have some updates to it and has been, obviously, um, it's a well-maintained home, does have a heat pump and things like that. But um, so just know within your range there that obviously the lower, um, you're going to expect to probably have to do a little more work with it. Um, and then you've got some brand new homes. You've got some huge, beautiful estate homes taking you all the way up into the millions. Let's take a look at the data. So on the MLS, current listings, and again, this is being filmed in mid-October. So looking back at the month of September 2024, 384 um, active listings on the market, 175 of those, about half, uh, were 650,000 or less. 650,000 is a point I'm, I'm using with this because I do have a lot of people reaching out asking about that price range of home. So about half of them, 175. Um, as of the end of September, we're 650,000 or less. Um, a little more than a month's inventory accumulation. You can see compared to last year um, when the inventory was 325. So the supply has gone up, um, which is typically good for buyers. Typically means the prices are, you know, hopefully uh, going to be a little more affordable for them. So let's take a look at those prices. So as of the end of September, the average list price 814,000. So that doesn't sound super affordable compared to 780 the year before. However, if you go over to the median list price, you will see that um, it's 625,000 in August and September of 2024 was actually a little bit higher back in September of 2023. So as far as affordability goes, that's good news for buyers. So I keep talking about this fantastic location between Baltimore and DC. So let's take a look on Google Maps. You can see um, we're all zoomed out there on Baltimore. Um, DC is kind of down to the southwest 
of where we are. Um, the house we're going to look at, if you see that Patapsco Valley State Park, um, this property happens to be located um, right on the edge of that. So if you keep your eye on that, you'll see. Um, all those big yellow lines are major commuter routes. So the property we're going to look at is right off of 40, but you can see 70, 29, 695. Those are all in there. Um, Howard County is a very commutable location, um, closer to Baltimore, but also very commutable to Montgomery County and to DC. So um, you just come down Chestnut Hill Road, you follow the, the mouse there, and I'm going to show you again where this particular property is located. It's a very typical um, one of the suburbs that uh, was developed back in the, this one in the 60s, and lots of ranchers, Cape Cods, split levels, split foyers. Um, this split level is right here on this cul-de-sac. And again, if we kind of zoom out to give you um, kind of an overview, you can see that whole big greenery area there. That's all, all parkland. We'll zoom out a little bit more here. You can see all the major commuter routes. Um, if you see Catonsville there, that's actually across the line into to Baltimore County. And we'll zoom out a little more. You can see where Baltimore is. You can see where the Chesapeake Bay is. You can see where DC is. So just to give you some context on the location. Okay, this home is a split level. Some people call them a tri-level. So you can kind of see that looks like yard, mature landscaping, very similar homes located around it. So we're going to head on inside here. Let's go ahead and get in that front door. Um, as we wait for the computer to stop buffering there, you can see this one happens to have, um, in most of the house, original um, hardwood floors. So these floors, they actually, in this particular property, these floors were hiding under carpet for at least the last 30 years um, that the, the occupants that just, um, just left um, just passed away, actually. It's an estate sale. Um, those were hiding under, under those carpets. But so original hardwoods, that's very common in the homes that have not been um, renovated. You will find some flipped homes down here that um, no longer have those, and some still have them. And so head back over here so we can go in through the kitchen. You can see that's what makes it the split level. You've got the stairs going up, the stairs going down. Computer is not cooperating today. So here we are from the foyer. Now we'll head up to the upper level. In this case, still have all of the original hardwoods. This particular home has three bedrooms and two full bathrooms. Upstairs, um, you will see as we walk into this first full bathroom, it's a nice size. It, um, it, it has not been renovated, clearly, with the, uh, the brown tile there. Um, decent sized bedrooms. You can see, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy here. You've got a closet, decent sized closet. Heading into the master bedroom, still have those original hardwoods. It is a larger room. Does have, um, in this case, the two closets. And you will notice as we head into the master bathroom, very small and very pink. So love that vintage tile. So let's head back downstairs. I do apologize. The computer is being very persnickety today. And we'll head into the kitchen. A lot of the homes that have been updated, some, this, this is an updated kitchen. I believe it was the 90s this was updated. Um, some of them are still going to have the original kitchen. Um, some of them are going to have updated, still have a lot of the original flooring and all, but have taken out some of the walls and all to make it a little more of an open um, concept on that, that main level of these tri-levels or split levels. So heading out of the dining room, we're going to head into the backyard. Um, again, because most of these homes that were built, um, again, this one was built in the 19, 1960s, 1961, um, they originally had uh, well and septic, but now we're on public water and sewer. 
And they, so there, this one's a little under half acre, a lot of lots, you'll see a lot of the homes that you'll see in this age group um, in, in these developments have about a half acre. There are some that are larger, there are some that are slightly smaller, uh, but nice big fenced in backyard. Um, one of the things that I personally like about some of these older homes that haven't been flipped, that haven't been fully renovated yet, uh, they have the mature landscaping. They're, two beautiful crepe myrtles in this particular yard, um, big lilac bush, lovely rose bushes. So that's kind of a plus to these older homes. Okay, let's take a quick trip downstairs. So the bottom of the three levels, whoops. Um, this one has a half bath also, not renovated. This particular home, this property does have a new water heater and in the room off to the right back there, um, a heat pump that was put in in the mid 2000s. Um, some do still have the, the furnace and the AC. And you can just take a quick glimpse there. That's kind of what um, a typical split level uh, floor plan looks like. This one has 18, a little under 1900 square feet um, plus the, the two car garage. So let's take a quick peek out to the front yard. Another thing I like about this particular home and many homes um, in similar uh, neighborhoods, developments, um, you have a nice size front yard too. So you've got the, the backyard that's a little more private and the front yard, um, this particular property, I think this little side, side yard here would be great to have a little vegetable garden if you wanted. You can see, um, driveway coming up there. Nice size front yard. You can see the proximity to the neighbors. Not super close, but um, close enough that you can see your neighbors. A lot of similar homes. This particular neighborhood has a lot of split levels in it. A few ranchers, um, but primarily split levels. Couple, couple two stories. Again, this just kind of shows um, relative to the to the neighbors. This particular home has a brand new roof and siding, which is a big benefit. That's definitely something to, to keep in mind when you're looking at these homes. The um, If it has HVAC and the age of the HVAC, as well as the um, age and condition of the roof and exterior. So this particular home is right now just under 600,000, started out higher than that. Uh, just to give you an idea of what you can get. Um, again, we are in October 2024. There is an offer in on this one and a couple offers that sound like they're about to come in. Um, currently priced just under 600. So giving you an idea of what you can get in the 600 or under range in Howard County. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you would prefer not to reach out to me and you just wanna look for homes that are um, in, in the Howard County area, if you go to the comment section, there's going to be a link and you can um, search away and, and look for homes in that area, um, in that county, and you can go through and, and set, you know, set your filters. Um, if you would like, like to ask me questions about it, please feel free to reach out. The QR code that's on the screen will take you to my link tree, which can also take you to several other property tours and some other property um, searches if you'd prefer to do it on your own. Um, if not, if you need some help, if you have some questions, um, feel free to reach out.